Who would you rather be right now? Yeah. If you could go anywhere uh, on a magic carpet, where would you go? Put one hand up. Somebody. Go oh, somebody. Somebody have a plan. Where would you go? Iceland. Yeah. Iceland. Okay. Keep in your freezer. You'd be all right. <laughs> where would you go? To the Bahamas. To the Bahamas? Yeah. Okay. Where would you go? Yeah. The lady behind you. Where would you go? France. France. Anybody else got another exotic trip? Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll wait and uh, we'll wait till you get back. Who is that? I, I'm here, sorry. Where do you want to go? To visit a parents' town, Pakistan. Are you sure they want you back? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Did you help with the cooking and the cleaning with you? Uh, no, no, no. Did you do none of that? I want to be a child like a baby again. I don't want to take the responsibility. I want to act like a kid at their home. They brought you in the world, got you up to your age, got you <laughs> education, and you don't want no responsibility. Mm -hmm. That sounds like, sounds like America, don't it? All right, here's the deal. I want to really pay tribute to uh, Linda Smith, who is this is done in her honor. She paved the way for this. And also for the person she wrote about, I think, is uh, Annie. What's the name, Annie? Something. Mm -hmm. Where you at, Annie uh, Dillard? She wrote about Annie Dillard, who was a mystic. Okay. Uh, I'm not a mystic, but my presentation is close to it. Since 1977, when I lived in New Orleans, I started noticing a lot of violence in the streets against women. And I was infatuated with that. And for some unknown reason, I didn't collect baseball cards. Or, I just started collecting articles that I found, you know, with violence against women. And I built up such a collection that I decided to do a book. And I did a book for We Are Strangers. Okay. My presentation is really how the religious base has set women up to be discriminated against. You're following a man-made rule. Because if you believe in God, God did not create woman and then say she's sinful, she's evil, she's wicked, you know, in a small print at the bottom of the page. It didn't happen like that. Man made it so that you are where you are. And it goes so far back that if you don't use CRT, not CRT, if you don't use critical thinking, you will never find how the platform was set up that women could be discriminated against, treated like possessions, cattle, violence, whatever. And some men went along with that and we are where we're at today. And until you realize that the platform that puts you on the slave block was created by men who just muddle along and let them make all the rules about you, your body, whatever, whatever. You have no choice but you won't research it. Who's ever heard of Kim Kardashian? Put your hand up. Please, all hands, please. Okay. Who's heard of Lilith? Put your hand up. Lilith. Just a few. Look at that. Why? And I asked our kids the same question. And all the hands go up. I said, why do you know more about Kim Kardashian than you know about something that affects your life? That's because they have marketed you to being interested. So what's her claim to fame? Is it something that anybody in the audience can go out and do tomorrow? So what are you learning from her? But you're infatuated with it. And on top of that, they layer in on that tape, TikTok. Oh my God, TikTok. You can go on TikTok and learn how to twerk. You can show fingernails and hairstyle and you can get the gossip who did what to who, when, where, and how. And they say our kids are spending more time on TikTok than they're spending on homework, the library, cleaning up the house, or even bathing. So the Kim Kardashians and the, I don't know who, I, she just stuck in my head also, look at that. You found it? So I'm gonna read this little presentation uh, and I hope you listen, please listen. Intro, women are not created equal, evil. I repeat, women are not created evil. 
If you believe they are, then you are accusing the God you profess to believe in in creating this evil. Okay? This is my plan. As soon as I can get the funds, I'm going to do a podcast on it. I got enough to run for two years. Uh, my podcast was called Girls Night Out at the Mall, adapted from my book, For We Are Strangers. It's a, a, a woman, the women through the, through the eyes of the women that are accused of bringing sin to the world, and they have been there and seen it all. Pandora. People know the story of Pandora? She brought evil. Lilith, she was evil. Eve, she was evil. There's your platform right there. And these women did not write that. The men wrote it, okay? In the book, The Class of Civilization, it is said that after a war, the conflict would center on politics and culture, but they forgot about religion, race, and the war of women. In the ancient Greek comedy play, Estrada performed in Athens, Greece, this is trying to encourage women to stop having sex with men, to stop this bloody war. Although it was an option in the play, Bette Midler, who is obviously a student of political sexual history, done it in the past year, 411 BC, and suggested this this is plan could be revamped and just might work in the 21st century to stop the invasion of the bodies of women. And like former Nancy Reagan, Beth said, just say no, not to drugs, but no to sex. I suggest that all women refuse to have sex with men until they are guaranteed the right to choose by Congress. I'll wait. Okay. Beth said after the proposed tactics by the society to be played, Beth suggested that all women close their legs and all other purposes, I added that, until the men stop. <laughs> the Peloponnesian War against Greek cities, Pandora speaking. Today, one of the longest running wars in the history of the world is still on the battlefield today in the 21st century as war still rages against women. And although drones and bombs today cannot tell the difference between a hairy chest and a woman breastfeeding her child, women in war and in peace die at a higher rate than any soldier. Okay, um, and they also can't tell the difference between a military uniform, a suit, or golf clothing, but they can always have victims, women. Many wear the sheep of religion, but yet are, are wool in sheep clothing. I checked all the headlines for today and found predators from all male walks of life preying on women and young girls. But we've all been warned of false prophets, or have the people so easily forgotten the written warnings in the biblical text of false prophets. Like, for example, in Matthew 24, 24, for false Christ and false prophet will arise and perform great signs and wonders so as to lead astray, if possible, even the elect. Eve, are you talking today about today's false political prophets, of which we have many? Or what about Jeremiah says in Matthew 23, 14? But in the prophets of Jerusalem, I have seen horrible things. They commit adultery, Jeremiah has been and they walk in lies. They strengthen the hands of evildoers. Hmm. Do you know anyone that strengthens the hands of evildoers today? And select them for high office so that no one turns from his evil. You understand what that is? People that are in a high position select other people that are in bad character to protect that leader. Tommy, sound, sound familiar? It's been said and proven that lies unverified by fact checking can be believed by some and will become the truth if not challenged. There's a thin line in between reality and unreality. Believing in an unreality will decimate a country from the inside without a bomb being dropped by an international enemy. Khrushchev had said many years ago that America would not be destroyed by a bomb. It would be destroyed from the inside. He made that prediction. If he were here today, and he's not, uh, some people would want to hear why he came to that conclusion. Other names, characters, places, and incidents are the product of the author's imagination or taken from media articles and any resemblance to actual events locales, persons, or politicians 
is entirely according to them. Don't believe what I just said. I'm not doing this by accident. Okay. The characters. Pandora from Greek mythology, Lilith from Jewish mythology, Eve from Christian mythology, Adam from Christian mythology, and the stranger, a mystical spiritual force that examines one of the longest standing wars in the history of the war on women. This is a good group. They are quiet. I can see your brain working. No one's on their cell phone. No one's painting their nails. Oh my God. I gotta write a book for future teachers. They gotta keep you interested. It's got to hit you. Because if they don't, you're out of here. Like now, I would not have fed anyone if they left this room. Because they grabbed their sandwich and out the door. Okay. Welcome to an opinion about the war on women that is probably raised from the beginning of human existence on this planet. From the beginning, man has attempted to write many religious texts in order to challenge the concept that God, any God, created woman as an equal to man. This is a story never told and would be up to you to aid in stopping the war on women or allowing it to rage on unrelenting and unquestioned. If critical thinking was ever needed, this is the area where it is badly needed. Of course, some of the male misogynistic men want you to stop. They want you to go back and look and see what was done to you. Wouldn't that be convenient? You know, don't research nothing. You know, does that mean that people the victims of Holocaust, they can't look into the past? Does that mean the American Indian was abused? They can't look. No one can look except who has the power. They tell you what you can learn about your own ancestors. That is totally ridiculous. Totally. Uh, it's recorded in many religions that women were the curse of man, often found in many religious texts throughout the world. Anchor was directed at two gods specifically for creating this unwanted creature, that, 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 and that, called woman. Uh, in Greek mythology, the god Zeus boldly confessed to the reason he created women. Why did Zeus create women? What, did, what was his reason? Somebody. I'll wait. No one knows why Pandora was created? Seriously? You have someone to blame. Huh? You have somebody to blame. The reason he admitted why he created women, to punish man on earth. Men populated earth in Greek mythology. There were no women. And so Prometheus decided to give the men on earth fire. And Zeus was pissed. How dare you? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send something that would destroy man's confidence. And he created Pandora. She was beautiful. She was dressed by the gods. All of them contributed to her beauty, her musical knowledge, whatever. And he gave her a little box. Come on, Pandora's box. You had to hurt. They do cosmetics. Come on now. <laughs> okay, I, I didn't put in that the, the key word, cosmetics and Pandora. So you can make that connection. Okay. We got it now, right? So this is a little box, and it carried all the evils. Being inquisitive, like some of you are, Eve opened the box before she got to earth, and all the evil came out. Deceit, vengeance, violence, hatred, whatever, all that came out. So as a result, she got to blame. But Zeus admitted, yeah, that's why I turned it out and destroyed men. Okay? Uh, he created Pandora and intention for the purpose of tormenting men, but at the time was the sole occupant on earth. Sound familiar? Come up to the biblical days. There was a sole occupant on earth. Who was it? Adam. Adam and the animals. In Greek mythology, it was men and the animals. None of y'all. Okay? Uh, the myth, mythological biblical Adam recites statements and prayers from some early Christian writers that said that man did not want or need this creature called woman. In spite of man's prayers, the Christian God and Zeus had already created woman and the epic battle of the sexes was on. Look, it looks like some men in religions in the 21st century still believe that woman brought evil to the world to destroy men and that God should never have created them. But the war on women was not exclusive to any region in the world. There was a war on women in America in the past along with the war on some of God's other creation, like American-born Indian, African, American Black, Asian, other people of color and Jews who were the targeted 
target of the jack booty booty stepping men with torches who boldly marched and channel chanted, you will not replace us. So some men were not pleased with anything that God created. The woman, people of color, whatever. You know. So now they had to reel back at God and they had to reverse that. They had to put out the story that all these people were should not be on the planet, should not be in your city, should not be in Martha's Vineyard, should not be nowhere. Now, God, how dare you? You, you not only created all these different races, but you created woman. I can, we can, men can never forgive you. Okay. Uh, there was a war on women in America in the past. While appearing to be supported by some politicians in high office, many believe that God got diversity all wrong. And he had the power to stop the issues on the Mexican border. He could have stopped racial injustice, and God could have stopped the war on women. Stranger, according to history, not to be left out as being unworthy of living in America at one time or another, if you go back in history, at one time America did not want Mexicans, they did not want Arabs, they did not want Muslims, they did not want Puerto Ricans, they did not want Polish, they did not want Japanese and Chinese and Italians even. They did not want them in America, okay? And of course, they wiped out the American Indian. How dare he be here on this this land? We got to march him trail. Of, anybody know what the trail of tears is? This young man right here knows what the trail. Of, tell him what the trail of tears is. Wait, echo. Starts off. It starts at uh, Andrew Jackson had a, had the, the uh, Cherokee basically marched all the way out to Oklahoma. Over from North Carolina to Oklahoma, the College Trail of Tears, and a lot of other tribes ended up being forced that way. Thousands died. They took their land because this was a redevelopment of the West. So thousands of them died on this Trail of Tears. But you're, if you're an Indian, you're not supposed to go back and look at that. That's critical thinking. You, you can't do that. Okay. Uh, also, many found fault with God for creating those that believe in alternative religions and were liberals, and those that believe in Fair election. We don't need them. So if you look at the scope of who's on the targeted list, almost everything. People, elections, women, this and that, whatever you know. Stranger. This is a quarter joke on the relationship between some men and women, but probably on the bucket list of many women. Might be on your bucket list. Maybe. Okay. A woman came home screeching her car tires and she pulled into the driveway and ran in the house. She slammed the door and shouted excitedly, Honey, pack your, pack your bag. I won the lottery. The husband said, Oh my God, where should I park? Where should I pack? Beat stuff or mountain stuff. She doesn't matter, she said. Just get the hell out. <laughs> that cracks me up every time. I just hope my wife doesn't ever say any words to me. I hope when she says the lottery, the thing is 50 50, me and you, okay? She tell me to pack my bag. I'm going to bust out. Right. This is quoted joke number two that lives in the hearts of men in the past, present, and will be there in the future. In the beginning of time, God created the world and then rested. Then God created man and then again rested. Hold on one second. I have the same trouble with God, uh, with a uh, bag of Kroger. can't get the woman, you know what I mean? Since then, uh, God created woman. Since then, neither God nor man has rested. But if you're not afraid of the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me God, much of this narrative will remain true if you fact check it. Lilith. It is said that the Bible and religion was written and created by man for man. It is just a collection of notes, letters, and oral folklore tradition created by many writers over a thousand years. It is reported that its creation came about 325. A.D. 325 years they decided to write what happened with Jesus Christ and put it in book form. It is said that the first council of hundreds of bishops came together to decide what went into the Bible. This book that everybody believes God wrote every word. Okay? The war on women were at the were always involved. And it said that the writers of the Bible rejected hundreds of texts because they gave women too much emphasis on the contribution of women. Not the word of God, but the word of man. 
Again, it is alleged by many historians that any reference to women were extensively edited, taken out. Okay? So, there's, I understand that they're saying there's no chapters in the Bible written by women. There's a chapter in the Bible that can mention women, but it's basically in a negative connotation. You can own them, you can beat them, you can trade them, you can rape them, you can go, go ahead. That's the foundation. Okay, it was strictly divided for men at that time period that thought of himself as superior to women and didn't want to establish any reason to change that into religion. What texts were not rejected were extensively edited to ensure that women were not portrayed as being capable, important, and of course, equal to men. That ain't going in this book, okay? But it's not in a lot of other books. There's, there's religions all over the world. They don't agree on nothing. But two things, they agree on war, and they agree that women ain't worth nothing. I don't care what the religion, very few of them highlight how important women are, okay? So they erase that from your memory, and they give you Kim Kardashian stuff today. They give you Tic Tac to study, okay? Adam. So thinking back, I'm not sure that if God had, had the woman code right, you, women should have been recalling and pre-programmed to know their place. Don't you know that St. John Chrysostom, 349-407, the Archbishop of Constantinople declared you, woman, as a necessary evil, a natural temptation, a desirable calamity, a domestic peril, a deadly fascination, and a painted ill. This is a religious leader that influenced at the time. And would you disregard the elegant and convincing conclusion that one of my brothers, Tertullian, the father of Latin Christianity, 15022, who said that woman is a temple built over a sewer? Huh? Now, imagine if you was in their house and you didn't fix dinner, what would they say to you? These words are from religious leaders thousands of years ago. So, woman, if you find any fault with your description, look no further than early church leaders, Lilith. But let's do a what about it, as some politicians love to do when confronted with negative accusations against their party. What about Genesis 8.21, when God describes man in the King James Version of the Bible after smelling the pleasing aroma of the burnt offering by Noah and said in his heart, God promised, never again will I curse the ground because of man. But that verse is supposedly followed by God saying this, even though every inclination of his heart is evil, man, oh, so much women, and never again will I destroy all living creatures like the flood. And what about Job 5, 7, where God said, yet man, that's you, is born of woman, is short of days and full of trouble. You don't get that in Sunday school. No? So who needed to be recalled and pre-programmed? that they don't teach that in Sunday school. Eve, if this all-seeing God knew all of this, why didn't God have a plan to make sure that in the future, a man would not have control of a woman's body? God's already condemned man, that he's full of, you know, he is evil. He's born a woman, he's already sinned. But they still let man have control of y'all body today. Look, don't count on the girl. You know boys will be boys. And what I see here in the 21st century, it looks like God was on the side of men rather than women. They say that God parted the Red Sea for Moses back in the day, but today he allows misogynistic men full control over women and their bodies and refuses to come to the aid of women by the very same creature that God created man. Strangers, it's often said that religion is made by and for men, and you might be surprised at the modern religions that agree on almost nothing, but unanimously agree that women are a curse have less value than a man and should be controlled by man. For example, here are quotes from various religions. Somebody drop a pen. They were here. Christianity, Genesis 3 16. This is supposedly God speaking. I will greatly increase, increase your pain and childbearing. With pain you give birth to children. Your desire will be for your husband, and he will rule over you. So now God created you, and then he tells you, you're going to give childbirth in pain. 
your father and your husband were ruled. You think that's what God will? I mean, seriously. I mean, uh, some religions, their God might have said that. Lilith, would it have been more fair than God? Wait, before I read this part, everybody here over 18? Anybody under 18? If so, leave the room because I might be using words you might not like. I didn't say multiplication. I hope that again. Uh, would it have been more fair that God should have made an erection and ejaculation painful to at least make the pain feel even? You follow me? So now every time a man thinks, I'm going to go out, I'm going to rape this woman, he's going to hit with a bowl of light. And, yeah! and he said, maybe not today. Okay. Pandora. But look here, it says that God punished Adam by saying in Genesis 3, 17, 19, I will quote, although Pandora says, I will quote, although I don't know who I'm quoting, because you listen to your wife. God knew about a wife. Just because Eve laid there naked beside Adam, what kind of marriage ceremony was that? Anyhow, it said that God told Adam that curses, this is my God voice, curses the ground of your account, and pain you would eat its produce all the days of your life. It will grow thorns and thistles for you, and you must eat the vegetation of the field. In the sweat of your face you eat bread until you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken, for dust you are, and to dust you will return. You get no plunder, I didn't get nothing. <laughs> oh, no. I didn't get nothing for that? <laughs> wow. Okay. Eve. Eve asked a very good question. Eve said, what, what happens to me? I was not made out of dust. Anybody know that? Please, please, I want all hands to go up. How was Eve created? Please, every hand in the room. Three people? How was Eve created? To the rib, out of the rib. To the rib of Adam. You were going to say that too, wasn't you? And you too, okay. Uh, so Lilla says to Eve, just hold on, sweetie, because man will write something about what happened to you. Stranger, now don't laugh. This is me talking. I mean this. Don't ask me when I mess up some of these names. I can handle Tom and John and Susie, but I can't wrap my tongue around, tongue around some of these names. In Christianity, Leviticus 27, 37 says, God defines the value of one as 60% of a man. Look, oh, so God is in the stock market now, huh? And creates woman and then immediately devalues her worth. Isn't that considered inside trading on steroids? Now God is the creative judge and jury of the value of woman that has left it totally up to misogynistic men to set the final value and act accordingly. You can't make this stuff up. That's why I put Bible verse in there, because if not, people that don't like facts, well, ah, it wasn't in the Bible, you know, it's in the Bible. Stranger, listen to this. These are some of the names I got found in verse. Hindu Matthewism Rita, Trisha Shaw. Male age 24 should marry females between the ages of 8 and 12. So today they're prosecuting men that have raped girls 6, 7, 8, 9. But it's in their book. It's in their book. Islam, 424. Don't marry a woman that's already married. Unless they're a slave that you stole in war. Huh? So imagine me bringing home a woman and my mother said, where you get her from? Oh, my stole from the so-and-so tribe over there. <laughs> you know, has she been married? I don't know, Mom. You know, I would be out of there. Strangers, there's other religions with strong anti-woman views also take Judaism, Solomon, Packet, Shabbat said that a woman is a sack full of excrement. Read it, okay? Eve, that statement is not even worthy of a comment. God needs to wash her mouth out with soap. Are these ancient misogynistic religion writers that interpret as God's word? Lilith, maybe so. As according to the Talmud section, Sanhedrin 81b, 82a, found on Google, here's another quote. All female Gentiles. Anybody a female Gentile in this room? Put your hand up. You know what a Gentile is? Okay, put your hand up so they can see. Okay, there's one, there's two female Gentiles. Here's what, uh, here's what the Talmud says about you, ladies. All female Gentiles are regarded as menstrual filth, slaves, heathens, and whores. Furthermore, and to make it perfectly clear again, with a line in verse in Shadow 152, that women is a sack full of excrement, brimming with nita, which is menstrual blood, 
with a bleeding hole. Fact check me if you will, if you can't make this stuff up. Pandora. Why would any one of these descriptions appear in a supposedly religious book with the words attributed to God? These were words out of the mouth of some filthy religious men describing God's creation. No wonder they want to ban critical thinking. Pandora. I anybody know what a trust is? Journalism. Yeah, never mind. Never mind. And I found something called atrocity journalism and atrocity propaganda, which is the spreading of information, which includes or features deliberate fabrications or exaggeration. By establishing a religious history or accusation of women of evil and inferior to men, atrocity journalism is an effective tool. The purpose of those that use atrocity journalism, like TV opinion journalists, fake news enablers, and misogynistic men, is to diminish the value of women and to influence perceptions, attitudes, opinions, and policies to deny their claim that they were raped or molested, um, which is especially effective in protecting men in high office. 25 women can come forward and say this man molested, harassed, whatever. The rulers don't believe not one of them. Not even a big, and they can go on and rise to high levels. A lot of women hold back when even making an accusation because the stigma, the family, the job, the future, the image. So they hold back that pain because they're afraid to come forward because they know that the controlling male fabric will just jump on them with both feet. So when you see people being uh, selected to go to the Supreme Court, you follow me, and there's accusations, they made sure there's only one woman, the Hill woman, was the only witness. They didn't call the other five women that accused him for the same identical thing. You follow me? Got away clean. Okay? Mr. Kavanaugh, he went through that thing. Didn't believe not one woman. He went on up to the Supreme Court. Now he makes the rules for y'all. That's why you got Roe versus Wade. Because three people on the court didn't approve of women having any say whatsoever. You don't want to look at that game, you're not you're going to understand what happened. Uh, the strange thing with this, these uh, organizations that don't like fact checking is that some of these opinionated women on TV stations that should know better and come to the aid of women that have been abused, but yet for 30 pieces of silver, they deny these women support until it happens to them and they either bought off, fired, or slept shame. Some of these same people on some of these TV channels that just supported the attack on women and, and everything, eventually they either had to leave, they sued the station, or whatever, or got fired. Okay? Stranger. Let me continue with the religions that are negative about the values of women. In Buddhism, nuns, nuns get raped also. They have one third of the rules, they have one third more rules to follow than the monks. In Vinya Pataka, I know I messed that pronunciation up big time, but let me continue. The failed man becomes a woman in the next life. Imagine, the punishment in Buddha is that a failed man becomes a woman in the next life. So being a woman is a punishment. Uh, I have to skip a little, 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 little here. I have to skip that. Y'all not ready for that. You know. Um, but anyhow, if I read that passage, then I would say wink, wink, but I didn't read it. <laughs> Stranger continues. Some believe that these accounts of how the Buddha portrayed Rome were written by sexist monks, as the enlightened Buddha did not hold any ill will against any human being. The Buddha welcomed women, but the men, the monks, they wrote, but y'all, y'all ain't not about nothing, okay? The Buddha expected men to treat wives as partners and companions. And it said that in his view, women had an important and dignified role to play in society. The Buddha has said they have challenged on many occasions the widespread hostile attitude toward women. Lilith, if it can be acknowledged in Buddhism that sexist misogynistic monks wrote the words attributed to the Buddha, why is it so hard to believe that some Christian writers wrote the concept that were, women were evil and were unworthy and attributed to God? So that's what they did. You follow me? Even look what I found on DuckDuckGo. Anybody know DuckDuckGo? Put your hand up here. Why is it that older people go to DuckDuckGo? You don't go to TikTokGo? Huh? You don't go to Instagram? Oh, boy, you're missing out on the world. Boy. 
He is looking what I found on Dr. Go. It was said that even in the 20th century, the Mahatma Gandhi in India was in favor of removing all the disabilities suffered by women and gave a clarion call to all women who formed nearly half of the population of India to come out in large numbers in support of the call for freedom for women. The women responded in mass numbers and under the Gandhi leadership, women had a sense of equality with men and raised their voices against the age-old suffering at the hands of the misogynistic Orthodox society. Stranger, again, I had other religions, like in Jainism. No, I won't ask you. I won't ask you to know what Jainism is, okay? Uh, in Jainism, Dick and Barrow, where it says that women cannot achieve liberation without being reborn as a what? As a man. Y'all ain't got a chance. You know, if you don't come back as a man, it don't count. Uh, and the war on women continues. As you see by now, all parties in the story, I have given them laptops at different periods in the story by God so they can Google and find supporting information for the Jews. God, in my podcast, God brought them to Toledo, Ohio and had the three women be at the largest mall in Toledo. He found it. He brought Adam back too. Lilith was supposed to come back, but she was busy. Lilith had, Lilith was accused of being the first wife of Adam, according to the Psalm. Okay? And they got into an argument because Adam, I mean, the first Adam, no, the first Lilith said, Adam, you're not going to be on top. I'm going to be on top. It's just that plain. There's no kind of hymns and hauling on who was where or when. They said it. The man must be on top. Even Apollo says that the parent of the child is he who mounts. This is Apollo. He's a star. He's a hero. People love Apollo. But he said that you can't even be a parent if the man ain't on top. That, you know, you don't do that. You follow me? So Lilith said, I ain't having none of this. You ain't getting on top of me. And she flew off. So the God sent three angels to try to get her to come back. She said, no, I'm out of here. She went to France. She said, I want to try a cross. I'm going to find me two or three fellows, and we're going to do this thing that I like to do. Okay? So this is in the box. This is in the town. Christianity has problems with that. Oh, we can't have her as the first wife. So what do we want to do? So they decided to make her a night creature, an owl. But also in the Talmud, Jewish Talmud, they recognize Lilith. They even have symbols that they hung on the door to stop Lilith from coming in and mounting the male children and sisters. So they give truth to that belief. You follow me? So if you got a male child, you better put him over on the stomach. If not, Lilith's coming in and she's going to mount him. You follow me? And that belief carried, okay? Uh, as you can see by now, all parties have laptops so they can find out things. And they deserve a round of applause that they did not drink the Kool-Aid and join the 21st century cult of misinformation and fake alternative facts. Strange, it is said, and I quote, some rabbis have actually added an addendum to their 2018 Yom Kippur or atonement prayer by adding, for the sin we committed, what they, this is what they talk about here. For the sin we committed through inappropriate use of power by inappropriate sexual advantage and not being aware of our own power when making an advance. So they'll molest the woman and say, oh, I, I didn't know that you, you didn't want this. I took a no for a yes. You follow it? Lilith, cut the stranger off. Not being aware of their own power, give me a break. Awareness of the power is what made them think that they could get away with using it. This is an apology offered by so many men and politicians in the 21st century that they believe absolved them from blame. Men make the law, and look at this. It is said that in some cases, and I've really found this shocking, that in some cases, uh, the rapist can seek joint custody if an impregnated rape survivor decides to carry the pregnancy to term. And it's said that in some states, a man who fathers a child through rape has the same custody and visitation privileges to that of the child of a, 
ordinary father. Believe it or not, in 20 states in D.C. at that time, according to the National Conference of State Legislatures, September 30, 2015, a rape conviction is required before a business term requests termination of parental rights. So, woman is raped violently, the man is convicted of rape, but he goes to serve the time, he can come back and sit at the dinner table. Really? I mean, I mean, these are the laws. Pandora, according to Greek mythology, God Zeus is the only God identified as having created one as a punishable man with the direct purpose of destroying man when he felt he had been deceived. Well, I told you about promiscuous and the fire. Okay? Two more pages. I'll get a ham sandwich. <laughs> Lilith. Did other religions love this concept so much as depicted by the mythology of Zeus that they decided to alter the intent of God's purpose for the creation of woman and just declare her evil? I'm just saying. You can't make this stuff up. They must have loved it because many religions agree that woman was evil and was brought here to earth to destroy men. Look, hold it just one minute. Am I understanding that in Greek mythology, Greek gods about 700 years before Christianity promoted the myth that men were alone on earth with no women and Zeus decided to create women and bring evil to the world? 700 years later, the Christian God also created the first man, Adam, on earth with no woman. And then God created who? Eve, Eve, who was accused of bringing sin to the world. So the similar story? Okay. Understand that a lot of religions were based upon paganism. A lot of religions were fighting paganism, so they said, we can't get the people away from this. The goddess Diana. The goddess Diana was the goddess of childbirth. So when they would go to church, uh, the priest would say, where are the women? Where are the women? And the men would say, she's worshiping the feet of Diana because she's with child. And and so I had to give her some money, you know, because they had to put some money or gold or something at the foot of these statues. So the priest said, wait a minute. You mean to say you've given your woman money to give to another God? No. Let women come to church. Because before you weren't even allowed in early Christian church. You weren't allowed in there. Okay? So now the women are in, money flows, everything is okay. Okay. Then they had to diminish the value of the goddess Diana. They had to make her some anti-man. So they worked on that. And in Jewish religion, how is creation described? The reason I know this stuff is because I was there at the time. I am that woman, Pandora says. I am the first woman on earth to bring evil. The first woman on earth, and I was made to punish mankind for accepting the gift of fire. Yes, I carried me a jar, a box, take your pick which concealed all the evils in the world. And as a curious woman, I opened it and the evils escaped. And I was to bear the blame for bringing evil to the world of man until you, darling Eve, came into existence and took some of the heat off of me. But together, we both continue to bear the blame for man's fall from grace in Greek mythology, Christianity, and other religions. But obviously, many religions rewrote God's word unconcerned about punishment. God should not have abandoned woman and should not have allowed man to rewrite the purpose for the creation of woman. So between the two gods, Zeus stuck his chest up. Yes, I sent her there to destroy man. They're saying the Christian God took the Fifth Amendment. I not only ain't going to come forward, but your abuse is going to continue and I'm not going to stop it. So there's your two complex things that maybe y'all not ready for. But anyhow. Little, right on Pandora, Pandora. Women were from being created to be a helpmate to man to being a helpless victim of many abuses at the hand of men. And some gods stood back and let it happen. But Pandora, tell me more about your God Zeus, because it sounds like there's a little plagiarism going on here. You know, like Zeus created woman to punish man, and God created a woman, and Eve gets the blame for corrupting men. But listen. You are, of course, free to dispute this part fictional and truthful narrative as a right and privilege, as you have on all other religions and politics. Some believe they will have to, an have to answer to God on the limited, self-serving views of God's creation. And God will see what they were done, have done, and they will surely be reviewed. Adam turns to Pandora, who is laughing in the background. These theories are all bullfucky. Anybody know what bullfucky is? One hand up, bullfucky. Well, you've been here before. Mm -hmm. Don't be able to tell them. 
Just between me and you, we know what book is. Okay. It's in the dictionary. <laughs> These theories are all bullfucking, total falsehood, nonsense, fake news, and sad. And as to you, Pandora, you are not blameless. As I know you've heard man each and fair to your father Zeus when he asked, this is a fair made to Zeus. Zeus, why have you set a woman in the light of the sun? Woman, this man, mankind, finds counterfeit. If you wish to propagate the human race, it was not from woman you should have given us this, but the men should have put down in the temple bronze or iron or a mass of gold and bought offspring, each man for a price corresponding to his means, and then dwelt in the house free from the female sex. They would rather that God not have created you and would have let them go and buy an offspring. I don't know where the offspring would spring from, okay? But in closing, Lilith, Lilith is always hard nosed. Men are so confused about us. I believe that God intentionally meant to keep man in a perpetual state of sexual confusion so that man would stop trying to be considered a God. We have work to do. Thank you. <laughs> now, uh, just one other last thing. You younger people, do not go home at the dinner table and expound on this. And say, Mom, did you know this? That you will get slapped under the table. <laughs> it depends on your parents, but I, I'm, I'm with the, a warning. That small, I'm not doing no small print. I'm telling you now, you cannot run out there and say, "Oh, I heard this. I heard that man said a black man told me something." What? <laughs> what? Don't try it. Research it and make it yours. If you see it and you see it the way I see it. Then you go right and stick your chest out and help the women because y'all need help all over the world. Boko Haram is a group in Africa. They go in. Anybody heard of Boko Haram? <laughs> oh, I know you. Uh, they're an African guerrilla group. They, their specialty is going into all girls' schools and kidnapping them. Seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, thirteen. And then they take them into the jungle. They rape them with a lesson. And then they take them to Chad and sell them to other terrorist groups. One dollar, and they haven't been able to stop it. You know, the slave trade. Yes, it may not be about this color. The slave trade now is about y'all. Y'all in the slave market now. They're putting you in the back of vans, 20, 15 women, 10, 12, and selling them to, to brothels and whatever all across the world. You follow me? So you can sit here and you can do Kim Kardashian and you can do TikTok. And you can say, oh, I don't know nothing about that. I don't want to. But you're, you're really doing your daughter a disservice because she's going to have to meet this real world one day. That's it. All right. Now, I just have been very, very impressed because this man does all this research and he relates it to the modern time. And he doesn't tell you. Oh, believe what I believe. He tells you, think about what I just said, do some research, and think about what it means. One, one last thing I'd like to say. The Adam and Eve, uh, yeah, they say that God put Adam and Eve in the garden. He should have used me and my wife. <laughs> We've been married for 42 years. We'd have been a better Adam and Eve than what he put in the garden. And we'd have been, y'all have been running the, you've been running the world. There you go. I'm done.